have an ordinary piece of rope. It's not one of those magician's ropes that can mysteriously be put back together once it's been cut in half. And it's not particularly strong or durable, but you might say that it does have special powers because it's gonna demonstrate for us the physics of traveling waves. Ropes and strings are really good for this kind of thing because when you move them back and forth, the movement of your hand travels through the rope as a wave. By observing what happens to this rope when we try different things with it, we'll be able to see how waves behave, including how those waves sometimes disappear completely. How's that for a magic trick? This is a typical wave, and waves form whenever there's a disturbance of some kind. Often when something about the physical world changes, the information about that disturbance gradually moves outwards, away from the source in every direction. And as the information travels, it makes a wave shape. Think about the disturbance you cause, for example, when you jump on a trampoline. When you hit the trampoline, the downward push that you create moves the material next to it down a little bit too. And the same goes for the material next to that, and so on. And while that information is traveling outward, the spot where your feet first hit the trampoline is already recovering, moving upward again because of the tension force in the trampoline. And that moves the area next to it upward too. This up and down motion gradually ripples outward, covering more and more of the trampoline. And the ripples take the shape of a wave. Waves are made up of peaks with crests, the bumps on the top, and troughs, the bumps on the bottom. They have an amplitude, which is the distance from the peaks to the middle of the wave. They also have a wavelength, which is the distance between crests, a full cycle of the wave and a frequency, which is how many of those cycles pass through a given point every second. Multiply the wavelength by the frequency and you get the wave speed, how fast it's going. And the wave speed only depends on the medium it's traveling through. That's why the speed of sound, which is a wave, doesn't depend on the sound itself. It doesn't matter how loud or quiet it is, it just depends on whether the sound is traveling through, say, air or water. Now there are four main kinds of waves and we can use our rope to show the difference between some of them. A pulse wave is what happens when you move the end of the rope back and forth just one time. One lonely crest travels through the rope. That's the pulse. Then there's the continuous wave, which is what happens when you keep moving the rope back and forth. In that case, your hand is acting as an oscillator. Anything that causes an oscillation or vibration can create a continuous wave. Now, things that cause simple harmonic oscillation move in such a way that they create sinusoidal waves, meaning that if you plotted the waves on a graph, they'd look a lot like the graph of sine x. But the waves we've mainly been talking about so far are transverse waves, ones in which the oscillation is perpendicular to the direction that the wave is traveling in. When a wave travels along this rope, for example, the peaks are perpendicular to the rope's length. The same thing was mostly true for the waves that you made on the trampoline. The waves were traveling along its surface horizontally, but the peaks were vertical. But there's also longitudinal waves where the oscillations happen in the same direction as the wave is moving. In the case of a longitudinal wave, the back and forth motion is more of a compression and expansion. These are the kinds of waves that you get by compressing and stretching a spring. And they're also the kinds by which sound travels, which we'll talk about more next time. But all waves, no matter what kind they are, have something in common. They transport energy as they travel. At a microscopic level, waves occur when the movement of one particle affects the particle next to it. And to make that next particle start moving, there has to be an energy transfer. But how can you tell how much energy a wave has? Well, remember that an object in simple harmonic motion has a total 